Hello, welcome to OA Accountancy Staff. So today's video, we'll be looking at the double column or the two column cash book. But if you are new to this channel, I will encourage you to kindly subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so that any moment we upload a new video, you will be notified. The two column or the double column cash book is a cash book that has two separate columns for amounts on both sides. Thus, on the debit side or on the receipt side, it has two separate columns for amount and on the credit side or on the payment side it has two columns for amount so let's quickly look at the format of the double column or the two column cash book so the double column or the two column cash book as any other account has the title of the account so this are title of our account as any other account it also has two sides and that's the debit side and the credit side So these are debit side or the receipt side and this is the credit side or the payment side. So as any other account, the double column cash book has a column for dates. So these are dates column on the debit side or on the receipt side. And the next column right after the date is the particulars or the narration or the details column. So we we'll write particulars. And after the particulars or the narration or the details column is the laser folio column. And right after the laser folio column is the amount column. But as we said earlier, the two column or the double column cash book has two separate columns for amount. So the amount column will be divided into two. The first column will deal with all transactions involving cash and the last one will record all transactions involving check. So these are cash column and these are bank column. And then we will bring the sign of the currency we are working in. So let's assume in we are working in Ghanaian cities. Then we bring the sign. So on the debit side too, the first column is the date column. And the date column tells when the transaction took place. So the date column is the first column. Date. So right after the date is the details or the narration or the particulars column. And that column also tells the name of the account the corresponding double entry is recorded in. So we will create our particulars or details or narration column. Then after that, we have our laser folio column for the credit side. Then the laser folio column also tells the page number of the laser the corresponding double entry can be found. So right after the laser folio column is the amount side for the credit side or the payment side. So first is the cash column. Then we will bring the currency sign right under it. Then after that we will create our bank column. And we will bring our currency sign. So this is actually the format of the two column or the double column cash book. But let me quickly remind you before taking a practice question on how to record accounting transactions in this account. In our previous video, we said that in the two column or the double column cash book and the triple or the three column cash book, you'll be meeting certain terms like the contra entry or the contra entries. And we said that the contra entry or a contra entry is a situation where a transaction involves or where a transaction affects both the bank column and the cash column of the cash book. In the double entry video, we said that every single transaction should affect two accounts and thus one account should be debited and the other one should be credited. So if a transaction affects both the cash column and the bank column of the cash book, since they can all be found in the same cash book, then it means that transaction is considered as a contra entry. So now let's quickly look at the question 
and then you will get to know how to record accounting transactions in this book. The following transactions relate to the books of KK Memorial Enterprise for the month of February. So on February 1st, balance brought down cash 70,000 Ghanaian cities, bank 12,000 Ghanaian cities. On February 2nd, cash sales 10,000 Ghanaian cities. On February 4th, Cliff lent as 10,000 Ghanaian cities paid by check. On February 6th, cash banked 60,000 Ghanaian cities. On February 8th, cash purchases 15,000 Ghanaian cities. On February 10th, sold goods on credit to Sami 25,000 Ghanaian cities. On February 12th, withdrew 60,000 Ghanaian cities from the bank account of the business for business use. On February 14th, we drew 8,000 Ghanaian cities from the bank account for personal use. On February 15th, rent paid 1,000 Ghanaian cities. And on February 27th, received check from Sami 22,000 Ghanaian cities. So these are the transactions and we are required to prepare the double column or the two column cash book and record these transactions in it. So the first transaction says that on February 1st, Balance brought down cash 70,000 Ghanaian cities and bank 12,000 Ghanaian cities. So since we know that cash and bank are assets and they have debit balance, then it means their balances will be recorded on the debit side or on the receipt side of the cash book. But if the question indicated that the bank balance is a credit balance, then we would have recorded the bank balance on the credit side or on the payment side of the cash book. But since the question did not tell anything like that, then it means both the cash and the bank balances are debit balance. Whenever the balance BD of the bank column of the cash book is on the credit side or is on the payment side, then it means there is a bank overdraft. The balance BD of the cash column of the cash book can never be on the credit side because you cannot overspend what you have in your hands or what you have in your pockets. But due to the availability of credit facilities by banks, it is possible for you to overspend more than you've taken into your bank account or it is possible for you to overspend more than what you've deposited. So as for the cash column, it's either the balance BD will be on the debit side or the receipt side or it will not have a balance at all. And when it does not have a balance at all, then it means all what was received was spent or we spent all what we received. So let's quickly pass entries for the balances. So under the date, since all the transactions took place in February, we can write February on top of it. So on February 1st, balance the brought down and the carry down are written under the laser folio column. So balance brought down. Cash is 70,000 Ghanaian cities and bank is 12,000 Ghanaian cities. So on February 2nd, cash sales 10,000 Ghanaian cities. So in this transaction, the two accounts that are involved is the cash account and then the sales account. So cash sales simply means we've sold goods for cash or we sold goods and received cash in returns. So if we are required to open the other ledger account in addition to the cash book, then we would have opened the sales account in addition to this cash book because the two accounts that are involved is the cash account and then the sales account and since we are already having the cash column here then it means we will not open another account for cash so let's assume in the question went on to require us to prepare the other ledger account for all the transactions so the other account that we will open is the sales account so let's open our sales account here though we were not required to do so So this is our sales account. So we sold goods for cash. So it means our cash account will be debited and then the sales account will be credited. So we will debit our cash column of our cash book by 10,000 Ghanaian cities in the name of sales. And the date is 2nd February. And the corresponding account is we crediting the sales account in the name of cash. So on February Second, this is our currency sign, cash, 10,000 Ghanaian cities. Though we were not required to prepare the other lesser accounts, but we are doing so because in case 
the question requires us to do so, then we can do it and do it well. So the next transaction also says that. On February 4th, Clay lent us 10,000 Ghanaian cities paid by check. So this means that the business went in for a loan from Cliff and it was paid by check. So the full account that involved in this transaction is the loan from Cliff account and then the bank account. So since we are already having the bank column here, then it means it will be recorded in the bank column of the cash book. And the corresponding account is the loan. So let's assume in, in this transaction to the question required us to prepare the corresponding ledger account. So the corresponding ledger account is loan. Cliff. And we all know that loan is a liability and whenever a liability increases or is created, it is credited. So we receive the loan through check. So it means we will quickly look at the receipt side of our cash book and then debit the bank column of our cash book by the amount. And the amount involved is 10,000 Ghanaian cities. So in the name of loan. And it took place on February 4th. So the corresponding account is we crediting the loan account. So on February 4th, the loan involved is 10,000 Ghanaian cities bank. The next transaction is February 6th, cash bank 60,000 Ghanaian cities. So this simply means that cash was taken from the cash store and deposited into the bank account of the business. And we said earlier that whenever a transaction affects both the cash column of the cash book and the bank column of the cash book, such a transaction is considered as a contra entry. So in this transaction, cash was taken from the cash store and deposited into the bank account. So it means that the bank account or the bank column of the cash book will be debited with the amount and the cash column of the cash book will be credited with the amount. So the amount involved is 60,000 Ghanaian cities. So it means we will debit the bank column of our cash book by 60,000 Ghanaian cities in the name of cash. And it took place on February 6th. And the corresponding entry is we crediting our cash column of the cash book by 60,000 Ghanaian cities in the name of bank. And it took place on February 6. Then after that, we said earlier that whenever a contra entry happens, a letter C is written on the ledger folio column to indicate that the transaction is a contra entry. So we will write letter C against the transaction on both sides of the cash book. The next transaction is February 8th. Cash purchases 15,000 Ghanaian cities. So this also means that we bought goods or stock with cash. So whenever you buy goods or stock with cash, then it means that the goods or the purchases account will be debited and then the cash account will be credited. So it means we will credit the cash column of our cash book with the amount and the corresponding account involved is the purchases account. But since we said we are opening the corresponding account then it means we will open our purchases account as well. So let's open our purchases account. So the cash column of our cash book will be credited. So we will credit our cash column of the cash book by 15,000 Ghanaian cities in the name of purchases. And it took place on February 8th. And the corresponding account is we debiting our purchases account with the same amount, which is 15,000 Ghanaian cities in the name of cash. So the next transaction also says that we sold goods on credit to Sami 25,000 Ghanaian cities. We said earlier that. The cash book does not record credit transactions. It only records cash transactions. And when we say cash transactions, we mean transactions involving cash or check. So this transaction will not affect or it will not be recorded in the cash book. But since we said earlier on that we are opening the other ledger accounts, then it means we need to open ledger accounts for this transaction also. 
So this transaction says we sold goods to Same on credit, 25,000 Ghanaian cities. So it means Same has become our debtor and we need to open Same's account and then we will debit Same's account with the amount. And the corresponding account is the sales account because we sold goods on credit to someone. So the two accounts involved is the sales account and the debtor's account. We will debit the debtor's account and then credit sales account. So let's quickly open our debtor's account. So we will open Same who is our debtor. Same's account. So we will debit the debtor's account and credit sales account. So on February 10th, in the name of sales, 25,000 Ghanaian cities. The corresponding account is we crediting sales account. February 10th, in the name of Same. The next transaction also says that we drew cash 60,000 Ghanaian cities from the business bank account for business use. So we withdrew cash from the business bank account for business use. So it means a bank column of the cash book will be credited and then the cash column of the cash book will be debited. Because whenever you withdraw cash from the bank account for business use, then definitely the cash account is the account that's receiving the amount. So we will debit the cash column of the cash book with 60,000 Ghanaian cities and credit our bank column of our cash book with 60,000 Ghanaian cities. So we will credit our bank column with 60,000 in the name of cash. And it took place on February 12th. Bank, 60,000 Ghanaian cities. And we said that whenever a transaction affects both the bank column of the cash book and the cash column of the cash book, such a transaction is considered as a contra entry. And a contra entry is represented by letter C. So we will write letter C on the laser folio to indicate this transaction is also a contra entry. So the next transaction also is February 14th. We drew 8,000 Ghanaian cities from the business bank account for personal use by the proprietor. Whenever an asset is withdrawn for personal use by the proprietor, the first account that needs to come to mind is the drawings account. So we will debit the drawings account and then credit the corresponding account. So here, cash was taken from the bank account for personal use by the proprietor. So it means a bank column of the cash book will be credited with the amount and the corresponding account is the drawings account. So we will credit the bank column of our cash book with the 8,000 Ghanaian cities in the name of drawings on February 14th and the corresponding account is drawings account and then we will debit the drawings account on February 14th in the name of bank and the amount involved is 8,000 Ghanaian cities. So the next transaction also says that on February 15th, rent paid 1,000 Ghanaian cities. Whenever an expenditure is incurred, the double entry rule says that we need to debit the expenditure account and then credit the source of payment. So here, cash is the amount that was used to pay for the rent. So it means the rent account will be debited and then we will credit the cash column of our cash book. So we will credit our cash column of our cash book by 1,000 Ghanaian cities in the name of rent. And it took place on February 15th. And since we said we are opening the other ledger accounts for these transactions, then it means the rent account also needs to be opened. So we will open our rent account as well. And it will be debited on February 15th in the name of cash 1000 Ghanaian cities. So the last transaction also took place on February 27th and is received check from Same 22,000 Ghanaian cities. So here too, 
Self was received from Sami in payment of his amount owned or his debts. So here we will debit the bank loan of our cash book and then credit Sami's account because Sami is our debtor and is paying amount to settle his debts. So it means we need to pass entry in his account to show that his amount of indebtedness has been reduced. So we will debit our bank loan of our cash book with the 22,000 Ghana cities we received from Sami in the name of Sami on February 27th. And then the corresponding account is we crediting Sami's account to reduce the amount of indebtedness of Sami. So we will credit Sami's account with the amount and the amount is 22,000 Ghanaian cities. The corresponding account is bank and it took place on February 27th. So these are how the transactions are recorded in the double column card book as well as the other ledger accounts. So after this, then we need to close off these accounts. So let's begin with the cash column of our cash book. So let's close off or let's balance off our cash column of the cash book. And in balancing off an account, we first need to ascertain the total debit entries of the account, then we draw it somewhere. Then we ascertain the total credit entries of the account. Then we compare to see the one which is greater and balance off both sides with a greater total. After that, then we find the difference between the two totals and put the difference on the side with a shortage. And that difference will be named as balance carry down. The same difference will be brought to the opposite side after the totals and it will be called balance drawdown. And that balance drawdown will represent the opening balance in the next accounting period. The balance CD is the closing balance of the account. So let's first ascertain the total debit entries of our cash column. So our cash column amounted to 140,000 Ghanaian cities. So let's dot it here, 140,000 Ghanaian cities. And that of the credit entries also amounted to 76,000 Ghanaian cities. So after ascertaining the debit entries and the credit entries of our cash column, then we need to close off both sides with a greater total. So among this total, this is the greater total. So we need to close off both the debit and the credit side with a greater total. So we will rule a line here. And then you will close off both sides with a greater total. Then after that, you find the difference between the two totals and put the difference on the side with a shortage. So the difference is 64,000 Ghanaian cities. And this is the side with a shortage. So we will place the difference here. And it will be named balance. C slash D. We said earlier that the carry down and the drawdown are written on the ledger folio column. So kindly take note. And it will be dated as 28 February because that's the last day of the period. Then after that, the same difference will be sent to the opposite side after the totals and it will be called balance drawdown. So the difference will be sent here and it will be named as balance B slash D. And this one too will be dated as March 1st because this is the first day of the next accounting period. So we need to do the same to the bank column also. And by closing off or balancing it off, we said we first need to ascertain the total debit entries and that of the credit entries. Close off both sides with a greater total. Find the difference between the two totals and put the difference on the side with a shortage. And that difference will be named as balance carry down. Then finally, we will bring the same difference to the opposite side after the totals and it will be called balance drawdown. The balance drawdown will represent the opening balance in the next accounting period and the balance carry down is the closing balance in this current period. So let's first ascertain our total debit entries and that of the credit entries of our bank column of the cash book. So the total debit entries of our bank column is 104,000 Ghanaian cities. So let's dot it here, 104,000 Ghanaian cities. And that of the credit balance is also 68,000 Ghanaian cities. 68,000 Ghanaian cities. And we said that after ascertaining the total debit entries and that of the credit entries, then we need to close off both sides with a greater total. So among the two, the debit entry, which is 104,000 Ghanaian cities, is the greater total. So we will close off both sides with the 104,000 Ghanaian cities. And then we said that 
after closing both sides with a greater total then we need to find the difference between the two totals and put the difference on the side with the shortage and call it balance carry down so the difference is 36,000 Ghanaian cities so the same difference will be sent to the opposite side after the totals and it will be called balance drawdown so the difference which is 36,000 Ghanaian cities will be sent to the opposite side after the totals and it will be called balance drawdown but we said earlier on that if after everything and the balance BD of the bank column of the cash book is on the credit side then there is a bank overdraft we said that the cash column of the cash book can never has a credit balance because you cannot overspend more than what you have in your hands but due to the availability of credit facilities by banks it is possible for you to over withdraw or overspend more than what you've deposited or you have in your account so this will be the end of our double column cash book video if you are new to this channel i will encourage you to kindly subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so that any moment we upload a new video you will be notified until we meet again it is bye for now